SKModelTrains.com. Today I'm doing a follow-up on the Ultimate Throttle. About completed the dynamics of the, the, the throttle, and uh, my next step is going to be doing the actual uh, cosmetics of the cab. But I wanted to go over all the cool dynamics that this uh, throttle does as far as emulating a real locomotive. One thing I wanted to uh, point out, uh, the new gauges. Uh, these are gauges to be uh, representative of what would have been in an F unit. The speed recorder will ultimately go in its own enclosure over the uh, throttle stand. And the two gauges that are for reservoir and brake pipe will go into the panel. On the electronics, I had to uh, make some changes. Uh, in this section here, I used to have some amplifiers and uh, uh, equally some amplifiers that were used for bass and treble and equalization. Uh, I subsequently found that they just did not provide the quality of audio that was desired. So those were removed and I have a separate actual audio mixer of a higher grade that I've used. I replaced that with uh, an LCD display, it's touchscreen, um, and it's, it's fed by the Arduino. So I know it's hard to see, but uh, the new LCD display I had to put in there because there were just so much physics dynamics and some of the algorithms to catch up on, see if the computer was calculating correctly that I needed to put a display there so I could watch in real time how all the calculations were occurring. To feed the throttle temporary information as far as the cars and the grade, I just have this potentiometer here that I can go and I can set how many uh, box cars I have on the load and another dial here that's set up for in the, in the position it is right now is zero flat grade and either a positive 2% or a negative 2% grade. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to point out that as, as we run this with a different car, I have the dynamics of each one of the individual box cars calculating as the train goes forward and the, the software calculates the distance we've traveled as we pick up things like couple or slack. So I know this is kind of boring, I'm, f I'm focusing on this motor here, but the key point of this motor while we're doing this, this run here is this motor essentially gives a representation of the locomotive that would be on a train layout. Uh, and so this is where it gets a little confusing is it's only going to rotate when the simulation needs to make the locomotive move. That doesn't necessarily mean the wheels would be turning. Uh, an example would be if I put the locomotive on a, on a grade and I put enough ca box cars on this thing, the engine is going to start sliding backwards. And I'll do this at the end when I shut the engine off. Uh, the wheels aren't turning, it's just, I've put so many box cars on it, it's just simply dragging it down the slope. So the motor's going to turn because the simulation is going to want to give, you know, you know, on, when it's on the train layout, to actually sh force it to be dry, you know, going backwards. But it's not really going under power, it's just creating the illusion of it. So it, it's one of the areas that makes some of this a little bit confusing, you know, when we're operating. So I'm going to get ready to go forward, uh, and I have a bunch of box cars on on it. And uh, anytime that we go forward or backwards in physics, not by the throttle, uh, we're going to pick up the slack. And when we go forward, pay attention to the way the sound of it also changes. As we go farther and farther, the sound changes and goes gives the illusion of the sound is farther and farther um, in the distance. And the actual feel of the of the coupler slack is, is felt in the, the cab seat, where you can't hear it, but you can feel it.
so I've gone back to idle. I've got a lot of mass behind me, and this thing's going to keep on rolling for a while. So in this situation, I have the brakes off, but I'm going to essentially be tilting the grade of the track. Um, so, so essentially what we're doing is we're, we're, we're just rolling, and we've got the effects of the mass, not the engine that, are, that is moving this. And essentially, if we get enough, it's just going to perpetually speed up until you know it finds this equilibrium of, of a you know runaway train that we just we're never going to be able to stop. So now in this situation, I've got the brakes on, uh, and then I'm going to tilt the track. And this is the part my wife hates because this noise just screeches through the house. So if we tilt the track enough. The F7 is just not going to be able to hold that weight. And once it slides, the acceleration equally builds up because we've lost our traction effort. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give this a really heavy grade here. So that's my update for this couple of weeks. Hopefully the next time we go and over items, I'll be starting to get into some uh, more of the cosmetics and start talking about how to make the windshield and the camera that will be in the locomotive and looking at the screen. Um, Looks like we still have enough enough pressure still in this thing to go and blow a horn. I'll talk to you later. So